Okay, and I've been told I need to say uh, none of the trades that we discuss on the trade review are actual trade room recommendations. This is for educational purposes only, and I'm going to have to do this every day from now on, guys. I'm sorry to beat y'all with a stick, but it's required, so we'll be doing it. <clears throat> okay, so let's get started. So first of all, first question is, to find the current range, swing high, swing low, are we at the top, middle, or bottom of that range? So that's an easy question to answer. We're obviously at the top of the current range, right? If we look at the volume profile, here is the year-to-date high, 24.50. We're a couple of hair, hair tags away, a couple of uh, decent rotations up from that. Let's lower this down here so I can work with this. There we go. So clearly, here's the high. Bottom of the trading range. I'm actually going to go with the bottom of the trading range right now, being the um, old bottom right here, this 2070. Um, actually, I'm going to go with this 2070 area right in here, down to, say, 2065 is the bottom of the trading range. So we're at the top. We have not broken out yet. Important to note on your homework, NQ has broken out. We're going to go through this quickly because I got a coaching session literally right after the closing bell. I got started later than I had anticipated. Okay, so what was today's first hour range, first half hour range? We can go look at that really quick and get that down. Let's see. Hmm. How do I erase this? There we go. Okay. There we go. So. What do we know when the range ran from roughly Okay, so we o we opened, we pushed up near 2114 and a quarter. We rolled down to 2110 and 3 quarters. We had a high in the first half hour of just below just at 2115. So 11 to 15, 4 points. That's the smallest first half hour range we have had in, heck, I can't remember the last time we had that range. So why is that important? First thing to remember, rotations are getting smaller. Volatility is coming in. This is what we're doing on a volatility basis, right? We've come from, right, when we were going down, we went like this, very narrow to very wide, okay? We're doing the opposite now. We're coming in like this, and we're just getting really narrow, okay? Again, very normal for being at the top of the range. First hour's range, here's 930, was the exact same. So what's the first inference we could have drawn from the first half hour? Was that we would be in balance. Small rotations would require patience and choppy conditions. That's really valuable information right at the start of the day, right? We can tune down our intensity knobs. Way down, relax, right? We're not going to have, the, all we really got to make sure is that we don't overtrade our accounts so that we don't take multiple stops. Really easy on the day, right? So let's get rid of this. And let's erase this. OK, next question. What was the day, day's range? Greatest moves up, greatest moves down. Well, I think that we can uh, figure that out pretty easily here. We went right to resistance. Here, if everyone can, can see this. We moved from, the biggest move up was from roughly 2111. We're closing at 2118. That's obviously a seven point ro rotation for the day, range for the day. Small, note, please note, smallest rotation in probably three weeks, right? Um, and the biggest down rotation in that move was probably right here from 2115 down to 2110 and three quarters, five points down. Obviously we had seven points up. It was a balanced day. How do we know it was a balance, right? Break to new high, push back to the middle, break to new high, push back in, break to new high, you know, end of the day now. So hell, who knows what they're going to do with that, right? Um, let's see what else we got here. Um, so greatest move up, greatest move down. How many down, days up, down? Keep in mind, market has a hard time maintaining multiple down days in a row without major bounces. So let's go look at the... Volume profile, and hold on a second here. So like I said, 
we really don't have to get overly concerned about finding the short or even thinking about the market going down. We all know it's going to pull back, right? That's not a big deal. So let's just count the number of days up. That means days where we had higher lows and higher highs. So, well, at least let's just say higher lows. So we are one timing, in essence, for one. Let me highlight this so I can see this. One, two, three, four, five, six. Pull that down. Seven days. Okay, seven days up, one timing. What's our new bogey or line in the sand for figuring out? The first thing that has to happen for us to go, oh, we might move lower. 21, 10, and 3 quarters. Have that written down in your homework. Have that in your notes for tomorrow. If we don't trade below 21, 10, and 3 quarters tomorrow, buyers still have what I would consider absolute control. Does it mean we can't have a down rotation? Absolutely not. All it means is that that's what has to trigger first for us to start really thinking, hey, can we get, get any kind of bigger rotations to the downside? My focus, I can tell you right now, unless we get below this right here, 2084 and a quarter, all right? Unless we get below that, my primary focus will be, please put this in your notes, on long side setups. Until that gets broken. Now, will I change my song if we have one vicious, ugly down day? Hell yeah. But until I see us really trade and hold below 2084 and a quarter, buyers have control as far as I'm concerned. Okay, um, was NQ in sync with ES? Was it leading or following stronger or weaker? Easy to go through that. Let's go find out. We had that right out of the gate. Here's our NQ chart. And obviously, and I pointed it out early and often, NQ gapped above the year-to-date high. And I had one simple rule for today. I did not knock the ball off the cover, although my only trade I called, right, long side trade, but I said NQ above year-to-date high, and watch out, right? And then remember the other thing that I pointed out on this chart. This is plus 100, and I said, even if we don't get to the plus 100, 4,600 was still doable quite easily, right? Remember to pit the ranges that are possible in your mind so that you don't get over-emotional about we've been up 10 days in a row, right? Intraday, we're taking bigger picture and moving it to smaller picture so that we can make good decision-making process Hold on one second here. Like, uh, okay, and so we have to hurry because I have someone waiting. Okay, um, was the NYC tick showing balance? NYC tick was pretty much in balance all day. Here's NYC. You can see the tick all day long. Here's plus 600. Oh, let's make this a little bit smaller, please. Here's minus 600. Okay, guys, that's about as balanced as you get. Okay, so I would print that chart. That's balanced with an upside bias. I would print that out and put it in your notebook so that you, you have a reference for it so you know the next time you look. So characteristics, 10-point gap up. Move stolen overnight. We traded sideways. Compressed rotate, compressed range first thing in the morning, compressed range in the first, first half hour and first hour compressed range. We got balance. It adhered to the principles of balance perfectly. Requires patience to trade balance well in a super tight range. Avoid shorts in that environment. Focus on longs, at least when we're at the top of the range, right? Um, okay, let's move on to the next question. Are we one timing on the day time frame? Yes. If so, what would the market have to trade? We already got that answer right. Uh, we'd have to trade now below on both NQ and ES. Uh, on ES, we'd have to trade below 21.10, three quarters. On NQ, the low of the day is right here, whatever that is, 45.52.53. We don't trade below there. We're not done one timing to the upside. And even if we trade below there, I don't want people to make this mistake. Trading below there does not equal let's be short. It means 
heads up for a change in character of the market. That's all it means. Let's keep rolling over on this stuff. Um, where are the open gaps above and below? Let's go take a look at that really quick on the profile. Big fat open gap sitting right here. All right, that's our first bogey right there. Target on the downside, 2104 and a quarter. Below that, I don't think, correct me if I'm wrong, but it is 2069. Right, there's no open gaps above. The big deal is the 212450, I believe, is the year to date high. That's the next big hurdle. We'll see if we gap above that. Uh, given that NQ is as strong as it is, it wouldn't shock me. Again, I have nothing invested in which way the market goes. I don't care. I just want the setup. But it wouldn't shock me to see some new highs, right? Okay, let's go to the next trade. Okay. Um, where's the 200 day moving average? It's way below us. It's not even in play right now. Please note if you read. If you read Twitter streams or you follow fundamental traders or, or larger time frame traders, these guys, okay, we're below the 200, the sky is falling. That moving average, I follow one rule of thumb. If you can read about the technical indicator at Barnes & Noble on a book you can get off the shelves, it is not very useful, okay? It's a guideline, nothing more, okay? We're obviously blown way past it. Everyone who shorted because they thought Armageddon was coming between Greece and China, they're broke. Don't don't make assumptions based on simple stuff. Okay. Um, okay. Choppy. We got already covered that. The market was in balance. What was the rotation size from low to high and high to low? We already covered that. Um, buyers clearly had the edge today. Which part of the day had the larger range, AM or PM? I'm going to go with equal on this one. It's just a slow grind all afternoon with a little emphasis on the close. Um, mental review. Let's do this really quick. Okay, so the questions you want to ask yourself. Did I have my written trade plan out on the desk while trading? For me, the answer is check. Did I follow my own rules for entry, exit, and stop? Check, I did. We had the zero tick long right at the beginning. It sucked that we couldn't get anything for an hour. I think I got a point and a half and a point, or maybe a point and half a point. It was a point and half a point. On that scale, balance stopped on break even, but it pits the money in. The good trades, let's cover that. We did the euro, right? Again, I realize that not a lot of y'all are trading the euro. Uh, shorted the euro at 109.16. Uh, covered the bulk of that between 109 and 108.88. Uh, very good trade there. CL had that um, long on uh, from 2120. It obviously rotated all the way up. Uh, excuse me, 5120. Is that right? Yeah, when it popped up above 5120, I forget now. Let me go look. Hold on a second here. Ah, yes. So we had it long from. We had it long from 5120, traded all the way up to 5160, right? So from the entry of 51.21, 51.22, that was almost 40 ticks of rotation up. It obviously got crunched pretty hard into the close there. But uh, if you took the trade, you got money out of that one. Uh, let's see. Um, did I feel frustrated any part of the trading day? Yes. What was the trigger? Choppy conditions. I couldn't get my scale on my rotation. To watch it close at the high day kind of sucks. I would have liked it to have taken off. Did I process that well? Yeah. I went through when I took out the trade and said, I wish it would have gone. I've given it plenty of time to work. It didn't work. I kind of shrugged my shoulders. The majority of the time, if I stayed in a trade that long, I'd get stopped. I ended up the day profitable. There's not much else you can ask for of a day where the whole range was seven points and the entire first hour range was really less than five points unless you nailed it just perfectly, right? Did I judge my performance based on the amount of PL or based on following the trade setup and execution? I followed my setups pretty much perfectly today, and I had one simple rule this morning. As long as NQ was trading above the year-to-date high, I wasn't going to short. It kept me out of trouble all day long. Mission accomplished. So that completes the homework for now. I'll be adding to that over the next couple of weeks. I'd like some feedback. Hopefully that's helpful for you all to do this in real time, and I will take 10 or 15 minutes to do it every day so that we come in and we're already prepared and have our – what this should be doing is giving you a framework in your mind to pick context in tomorrow morning, right? 
Not so you're obsessing over and over all night long. There is absolutely zero need in my mind to be looking at these charts all night trying to figure out what's going to happen tomorrow. You'll notice my trade plan rarely says we'll go up or we'll go down. I don't need to know if we're going to go up or if we're going to go down. I just don't need to know. Um, I, uh, I simply need to know what the range is gonna be, has been like, what the patterns have been, whether we've been expanding or contracting, so that if tomorrow morning I walk in and we have a 12-point range in the first 30 minutes, I'll know things have changed. I can start looking for my trade locations appropriately. If I don't have that, right, if I come in and I have five-point range again tomorrow morning, I know. Choppy, looking for balance, and my bias will still be to the long side until we trade below prior days to, until we trade below today's low. If we gap below today's low tomorrow, right, that'll be a change in character. We haven't done that in seven days. First thing I want to know is can we get back above today's low? Can we fill the gap on the upside? What is the range in the first 30 minutes? What's the range in the first hour? <clears throat> Once you start doing this every day, it should become, I don't want to say it's easy. It's not easy because you still have to figure out how that figures into your trade placement, but um, it should become easier, guys, as, as we do this every afternoon, coming in the morning. It should fit like your shoes, right? You're like, okay, I recognize, is there a pebble in my shoe or not? Is it tight, loose? You know, you should notice small changes because you should be uncomfortable if you don't, right? When the thing starts to change, you should feel kind of like this tingling inside going, something's changed, what's up? Go look for it and then adjust your trade plan accordingly, right? We still have the exact same setups, but like today, just by knowing, hey, I'm not going to focus on the shorts, I save myself an enormous amount of stress. Anyways, um, I, uh, I'm, I think we had a great day. Um, obviously, I'm trying to get everyone more comfortable with the euro. The crude's harder, right? You have to have a pretty big heart to trade the crude properly. But I think the euro does have some profit potential for us. So I'll keep uh, pointing out where those trades exist uh, and see if we can't get some P&L out of that. And, uh, and in the meantime, ES, we had a trade. It gave us some profits. And by the way, congratulations, Ron pulled out, I think you pulled out four points out of that trade if you're around, Ron. Congratulations, that was freaking awesome. Um, did better than I did by miles. So uh, anyways, that's all I got, guys. Um, I uh, look forward to seeing you all in the morning. Anyone, and if you have any questions, you need me to something, cover something in the trade review tonight, send me an email. It's going to be a short trade review, right? Not a lot to talk about in a seven-point range. Anyways, have a good night, guys. We'll talk later.